Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a great weekend so far. I hope that you're staying healthy and happy and you are ready to learn some IELTS with me. In this class, everyone, we are looking at IELTS speaking part two. Uh, specifically, we are looking at a cue card focusing on an object. The question will focus on an unusual object for today to get your mind working on some ideas. And this is a members chat lesson, which means that you have to be a member to join the chat. To become a member of our channel, simply click the uh, join button next to the subscribe button and uh, choose the package that's right for you. Um, this lesson again is, of course, brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. Those are the websites we use for these live lessons and uh, we will be using them today as well for some speaking practice on those websites. We have a speaking interface so we can speak with our students. This is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background and you can just simply click this big red button there right above my head to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access uh, to all of our great materials, our practice exams, our interactive courses, lesson videos. We are an official IELTS test registration center in Saudi Arabia uh, and uh, IDP affiliates. Uh, we are British Council agents, so you're in great hands with us. Uh, to get prepared for your IELTS exam and get the best score possible. You should always be going for the best score possible because it will open the most doors for you, whether for learning or visas, immigrations. Uh, hi Dwi, hi Amra. Nice to see our members joining in. Uh, for the general IELTS, same idea, it's the green background here. Uh, and again, you can click that big red button to join our premium IELTS package. Once again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Um, of course, we have apps. The apps link to the websites. Uh, download the app Academic IELTS Help from your app store, General IELTS Help. Uh, from your app store and then link it to your web account uh, for some dynamic learning. Um, you can get uh, also schedules for live classes from our Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. If you have questions, you can send me an email. My email address is Adrian, my name, at aehelp.com. Uh, so if you have questions about IELTS, our products English, uh, let us know. We're happy to help you. Um, students, uh, we've got a couple of classes for you right now. So speaking uh, part two right now and then speaking part three right after. Speaking part three is connected to speaking part two. Um, so it's a good idea to hang out in both classes. And then we actually have more classes for you tomorrow as well. Um, we have a, a light hall class. Uh, that's a free class, also a speaking, that's a full speaking interview. And uh, that will be on Lighthall. Lighthall is an amazing platform for live uh, learning. It's new, it's fantastic, check it out. I just put the link into the chat. And also tomorrow uh, we will have a uh, Discord uh, class. The Discord class, of course, is on Discord. Many of you, especially if you're a gamer, will know Discord. Um, there is the link in the chat for that event, um, which will also be more speaking. So lots and lots of speaking. Uh, speaking and using English every day is key to success, so practice does make perfect. Uh, make sure to join as many of these classes and speak as many of these classes <clears throat> as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have a new uh, release. We just released a new uh, speaking video with a candidate from Indonesia um, where you can check out part one and part two of the speaking interview. Um, that uh, video has some tips for you 
uh, what to be careful about when you're doing the IELTS exam. There's the link for that. Uh, Tulsi, good to see you join in on the class. That's fantastic. Uh, Amrit, I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. Uh, happy to have all of you here with me today. Uh, let's get into some uh, speaking, everybody. So IELTS uh, speaking section, uh, part two, um, is uh, the uh, second part, of course, of the speaking. It comes uh, about five minutes into your speaking section um, oral exam. And uh, there's a lot of different ways that you see the speaking now. So uh, many of you will still be doing the speaking face to face where you meet with the examiner at an exam center um, and um, then you will do the speaking that way. Uh, some of you are now doing the IELTS speaking through the computer where you go to an exam center and then uh, you speak uh, via video chat to an examiner. And uh, there's actually a new version of IELTS that has emerged uh, from IDP in some countries where you can actually now do the speaking from home. And we will have more information on that as well. Um, that's also a video chat type of setup. Um, and of course, you have to have very good internet connection uh, for that uh, to make sure that it works well um, without problems. So kind of like using Zoom or uh, Skype if you've used those pieces of software. Um, so IELTS speaking part one, um, you uh, sit down uh, and you uh, introduce yourself. Uh, the examiner asks you some questions on a general topic and then when you are uh, asked hmm, about four or five questions on that general topic like your sports that you play or hobbies that you do, uh, then the examiner will say that is the end of speaking part one. We will now continue with speaking part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to uh, prepare what you are going to say to read the questions. You can take notes in that one minute if you wish. And then you will have one to two minutes uh, to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. So uh, IELTS speaking part two only takes about three minutes. Now, these are very important three minutes uh, because uh, they have a major impact on your speaking score. And of course, your speaking score has a major impact on your IELTS score. Many institutions require the highest band score in your speaking, which is no surprise because that's the uh, type of communication that you use uh, most uh, when you're using English. So it takes about three minutes, uh, but is very important. Um, also because uh, it will have a big impact on your speaking part three, since speaking part three is connected to part two. So you really have to have very good strategy uh, for speaking uh, part two. Um, now, uh, many of you learn this uh, past, present, future strategy, past, uh, present, uh, future. Um, there's a couple videos online that tell you to talk about the past and the present and the future uh, when you're talking about part two. Uh, this only works for some questions. The reason I'm telling you this, somebody uh, said this to me. Uh, yesterday in the chat of, oh, just do the past, present, uh, future, but uh, that's not true. Um, so this only works for some uh, questions. Keep that in mind um, that actually ask you for this. Um, it does not work for questions that ask you about uh, either the past, uh, present, or the future. Uh, if you talk about all three, the past, the present, and the future, and the question's only focusing on the past, like talk about uh, an enjoyable birthday celebration that you went to, um, and you start talking about future birthdays, uh, your mark will go down because the question's not asking you about that. Um, so members, while I have you in here, Dwi, Amra, Amrit, uh, Tulsi, um, are you clear on that? So I just want to kind of clarify or correct this kind of information that's circulating around for a lot of students thinking that it's a good idea 
uh, to talk about the past, present, and future, okay? Do not do that if the question's not asking you to do that because then your mark will be lower and the examiner is not a fool. They will know that you're trying to use a strategy that is not effective, okay? So I can see that Tulsi Amra Amri are saying yes, that's clear. Uh, very good, yeah. Um, the most important part of uh, part two um, or the most important for part two is to stay on topic, give details, be original. For high band scores, you must uh, stay on topic, give details, have good structure, and be original. Okay, you need um, good strategy for this. Okay, so the examiner will read this first part of the question set, the topic. They'll say, talk about an unusual object you have seen. Okay, your one minute preparation time begins now. Um, so your first step, step one, is to read the question carefully. And it's a good idea to read them twice, just so you're absolutely clear, okay? Uh, remember, you can use the cue card while you're speaking. Um, it's amazing how many students uh, read the questions once and then start speaking, they get stuck, they forget to look at the cue card, uh, they stop speaking, the examiner stops them, they don't answer all the questions on the card, and they get a low mark, okay? Um, if you're stuck, especially, so if you're stuck for words, if you don't know what to say next, definitely look at the cue card again uh, to get some more ideas about what else you can say, okay? That's right, Toolsy. So read the question twice. So let's do that right now. Um, so this is a speaking class. Make sure to uh, read and speak with me. Okay. So read and speak with me during this class. Members and viewers, everybody who's watching, uh, make sure to read and speak with me. So this isn't just a listening class. You're not just listening to me. You have to speak and copy. Okay. Read and speak with me, repeat me, copy what I say. All right, so let's do this. Uh, let's go from uh, the top here. Three, two, one. Uh, talk about an unusual object you have seen. You should say uh, what the object is. Um, where did you see this object? What is the use of this object? What do you think about this item? Okay, uh, so one more time. Uh, talk about an unusual object you have seen. Uh, what the object is. Where did you see this object? What is the use of this object? Uh, what do you think about this item? All right, so for many of you, your brain is probably racing at this point going, oh man, um, what should I talk about? What should I say, well, before you start to freak out and, uh, and panic about what to talk about, uh, remember your strategy, okay? So don't rush ahead. Your one minute preparation time just started and you know that your step two is to identify the category of the cue card. Okay, so the cue card will either be a person, a place, an object, an event, or an idea. It's kind of one of these five uh, categories, which makes sense because just about any information fits into one of these categories. Now, sometimes it's a little bit of a combination, but most of the time it's just one of these uh, categories. And each of these categories has a specific way uh, to uh, structure and talk about. Uh, so make sure to uh, do that, okay? Make sure to figure it out and figure out what you need to say. 
Uh, Amra says the category here, it's not the topic so much, Amra, because the topic is an unusual object, but the category is an object. And when you talk about an object, okay, we always go through this because uh, students tend to kind of forget what these include. So when you talk about an object, what should I include and how should I do it? So what should I talk about first? Okay. What should I talk about first? All right. And again, it's very important to know this. So Amra says, let's talk about its appearance. Yeah, what does it look like? Right? So what does this object look like? Keep it simple. Um, and Amra says the second one is the origin. Yeah, so where do you get it? Where can you find this object? Where does it come from, right? Um, number three is its function or usage. Okay, how do you use it? What do you do with this object, especially if you're talking about an unusual object, right? Um, so usage. James says name, shape, material. That's the appearance, James. So it's uh, name, it's shape, it's material. That's the appearance of the object. The origin is where it comes from. Three is usage. And number four um, is its function, right? So, or its application, okay? And then number five, Amra says is your op opinion. Yeah, we can say it's your experience. Right, so what have you done with this object? Okay, so what does it mean for you? What's the value of this object for you? That's a good way to say it is the value. As long as you say one to two sentences uh, about the appearance, the origin, the usage, the function, and its value, the experience, while looking at the cue card, Uh, you will get a band a eight or nine if, as long as you're fluent. Okay, so it reads to a great band score. All right, so this is really important. Everybody really pay attention to this. Uh, this can save you definitely band scores on your IELTS exam. Um, all right, so first you have the uh, appearance, okay. Uh, then second, you have the origin. Uh, third, you have its usage. Fourth, you have the function. Fifth, you have the experience and value. And sixth, you're also looking at the questions. Now, keep in mind too, students, that when you talk about the appearance and the origin and the usage and the function in your experience, you usually end up answering most, if not all of the questions on the cue card because the cue card focuses on these, right? So um, if we look at this one here, we can kind of see that. So we can see uh, what the object is. That's the appearance, right? Uh, where did you see this object? That's the origin of the object. Uh, what is the use of the object? That's the function of the object. And what do you think about this item? That's kind of the experience of, with the object, right? So. It's a simplification of these questions. The questions are just often complex ways of asking the same points that we just listed. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go to the next step. Uh, what do you do? So you read the questions carefully. You have them in your head. You know that you're talking about an object. You know that you have to talk about the appearance, its location or its origin. It's, uh, its usage, its function, its value. Um, and that happens very quickly. So in that one minute preparation time, step one, step two, only takes you about 10 seconds, okay, at most. It doesn't take you more than that. Um, and then what's the next, uh, what's the next uh, step? So what do we do after we have this in our head? Okay, so Lamia, Amra, James, Dwee, Toolsy, um, what do we do? Lemia says, get some ideas. Yeah, especially for this kind of a question, right? An unusual object. So think about uh, two to three good possible answers, okay? They should be easy, original, and lots of content. 
Um, so easy to talk about. It should not be some idea that everybody's talking about. Please do not talk about your mobile phone. Uh, too many people talk about it. Don't talk about COVID. Too many people talk about it uh, for answers. So those kinds of popular answers, it's best to avoid them. Um, now, your two to three good ideas will also help you with part three, okay? So uh, keep these ideas in mind for part three also, as they will serve as excellent examples and sources of ideas, okay? So that's why it's very important. If I had to say, I would say that the most important strategy and tip for the entire speaking section is this uh, step three. Um, that I'm talking to you about right now. So what are some unusual objects that we see? Now, keep in mind, here's a little tip, everyone. Uh, on the IELTS, you do not need to uh, give the truth, and it does not have to be amazing for a band nine. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't have to come up with some really crazy object that nobody can figure out or think about. Um, it can be, you know, something that's unusual but still quite common, okay? Um, so you can think about objects that uh, the examiner will also know, but maybe you don't see them every single day um, around you, okay? Uh, so, what would be an unusual object that you have uh, seen uh, in your life? Now, um, I've got one on the uh, on the <laughs> on the thumbnail that maybe some of you saw for today's class. Anybody know what that object is called? While you're thinking, so that object looked like this. I'm gonna kind of draw it here. Okay, this is how that object looked. Um, anybody know what that object is called? I love this object. So while you're thinking, what is that object? And be really visual here. So try to think about, you know, you saw something on your way to work or at school, or uh, you saw uh, some um, object in the kitchen, in the restaurant, at a store. Okay, or yeah, so there's lots. I've, I've got at least five or six ideas in my head, but I don't want to. Uh, Toolsy, it's not a hammer. It's uh, related to eating. Okay, so um, this is basically this uh, together with uh, this. Okay, so Rajvir says it's a uh, fork, it's uh, something plastic. Yeah, uh, this one is called, <laughs> yeah, very good, Amra. <laughs> so Amra says it's a spoon hyphen fork. Um, yeah, very good. It's actually called a uh, spork. <laughs> okay. So this object that you see is called a spork. Okay, so it is a combination of a, a spoon and fork, all right? So it's called a spork, all right? Sometimes you see it even uh, fancier with like a little knife uh, part added to it. So it's called a spork, spoon and fork to put together. You've got yourself a spork. All right, um, so that's, that's my uh, gift for this idea for today, the spork, but there are other unusual objects um, as well. Uh, for example, anybody play music? In music, does anybody know an unusual musical instrument or an unusual tool that's used in construction or in building? Okay, or have you seen an unusual tool uh, in the kitchen other than a spork? 
or some kind of a tool in your chemistry lab um, or in uh, your uh, biology lab that you used. So think about it, okay, and keep it simple. You don't want to uh, be overcomplicated here or uh, some kind of um, a tool for uh, helping to learn, for example. Again, unusual object, but doesn't have to be super unique. So give me some ideas. I want to see how well you can come up with a couple ideas. You only have one minute, so this is a good question to kind of uh, motivate you to think quickly. Okay, Toolsy says a vegetable chopper. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, I know I've got a kind of an unusual tool in my kitchen, Toolsy. It's an apple slicer. If you've seen one of those, the apple slicer uh, kind of looks like uh, this circle and it's got this big kind of X or star in the middle and you just push down on uh, the apple and it immediately cuts the apple into uh, slices, okay? All right. Yeah, there's lots of unusual objects around us. So um, the last thing you want in the aisles for cue cards for part two is to think negative, like I can't come up with any ideas. You never ever want to think that way, okay? I have no idea, Baljeet, what a clamp meter is, but I will put it up here, okay? Uh, Rajveer says a multimeter, sure, yeah. That could be a good uh, unusual object, right? Uh, in medicine, so there are uh, lots of uh, unusual object uh, as well. Okay, Amrita, I'm not sure what you mean by an instruction letter, but we can put it up there. Okay, uh, Dwee says a rock with animal fragments. Um, Dwee, that, I think you're thinking about a fossil. Uh, and that could be good. Um, dinosaur fossil. Okay, sure. Dino with an O. Dinosaur fossil. Uh, wooden flute. Sure, Amra. Yeah. There you go. Now you're thinking. All right. Um, good. Okay, great. Uh, so there are lots of unusual objects. Yeah, in music, Amra, there's lots. Um, there's, for example, like the uh, finger guitar. I don't know if you've seen that, but the finger guitar uh, looks like this, where it's like this uh, kind of round, they usually use a coconut shell, and it's got these little um, metal pieces that you pluck or uh, you push on and then it makes kind of a nice sound. It looks like that. It's a finger guitar. Okay. All right. Um, so lots of unusual objects. Now you're coming up with lots of them. Okay. So here the very important tip as well is never feel like you are stuck for ideas. You should never feel that you are stuck for ideas in part two. Uh, keep an open mind and uh, think about all of the different uh, life situations, uh, school, work, uh, home, tools, music, okay? And you will certainly come up with at least two or three good ideas as we just did, okay? All right, we got a P missing here, clamp meter. All right, good. So, um, excellent, okay, we've got lots of ideas, that's great. Uh, let's go with the spork for today. I think we can all talk about the spork, so I'm going to, <laughs> and I love the spork, I, I really, I want my speaking part two to be about the spork. I would talk about the spork for an unusual object, and maybe you can learn a little bit about this amazing um, and unusual object called the spork. So, uh, your next step, Okay, step number four is to come up with some useful notes. Okay. And I see there's a lot of different uh, unusual objects coming up in the chat now, which is fantastic, students. So see, there you go. The floodgates are open. Your ideas are flowing. Um, so step number four uh, will be 
useful notes. Okay. All right. Um, so a spork. We're gonna go with a spork for today. Everybody, again, a spork is a combination of a spoon and a fork. Okay. Spoon and fork. Okay, uh, so first of all, its appearance. Um, it is uh, metal, wood, or plastic. Um, it's a combination of a fork and a spoon. Okay. All right. Um, and they're usually, eh, there's small sp uh, sporks, there's big sporks. So um, anywhere from, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, 10 centimeters, 10 to 20 centimeters in size. Okay. All right. It's origin. Uh, where do you think you can get a spork from? Okay. Amra says silver in color. Sure. Um, and where do you think you can get a spork from? Don't spend too much time on the appearance, students. So when you're talking about um, a person or uh, an object, uh, just a couple of quick sentences about the appearance, okay? Just to kind of introduce the idea and give a, an image to the examiner, but don't spend too much time on that, okay? And you're speaking. You should only talk for about 10 to 15 seconds on the appearance at most, okay? So where would you get that? Rajvir says crockery store online. Yeah, online uh, you can definitely get it. Okay, uh, Baljeet says utensil store. Um, maybe, yep, you can toolsy, that's right. Many restaurants, uh, especially fast food uh, restaurants sometimes will have a spork in rare cases. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and another place you can get them actually is camping stores, which will give you an idea of the purpose of these. Okay. All right. It's usage. So how do I use the spork? How do I use the spork? And this should be a fairly easy one, right? If you think about either a spoon or a fork. Um, then you will come up with this uh, quite quickly. So, uh, scoop, uh, soup, place in mouth, or you can use it to jab or stab, steak, and eat, or you can use it to stir coffee. Let's say. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Baljeet says not only for noodles, but also for pudding. Okay. Uh, not only, but also is a very good correlative conjunction here, Baljeet. And thank you for reminding us that, of that. Uh, sometimes students in the, um, in the notes, uh, you can also write down words that help you to increase your band score. So uh, Baljeet very cleverly wrote the words not only but also. Um, and uh, definitely when talking about um, a spork, you can really use these uh, either or, whether or. And uh, it's a good idea to write down in your notes um, some of these kinds of uh useful words for your part two that can help you to increase your score. Okay, so that was really smart. All right, um, so Toolsy says to eat noodles and soup simultaneously. Absolutely, okay, so that's its usage. Uh, what do you think is the function? So um, why not uh, have a spoon and a fork? So why have this multi-tool? Um, what's the logic of having a spork? Why in the world would somebody invent the spork 
um, even if we have a spoon and a fork and think about a camping store as well so why would we why would we do this there's there's a couple of good reasons and function you should always think about it so what's the logic okay so usage and function um, a lot of times people confuse these two or they combine them without realizing that they're combining them but it, ideally you should be able to think of an object as the way to use it and the function the application of that object okay so Amrit says for eating and design okay sure so eating yes uh, that's clear um, Zarina says it's more handy. Why, Zarina? When you say an idea like it's more handy, think about um, why. <laughs> Baljeet says uh, lazy to carry two of them separately. Um, <laughs> Amra says it saves time and effort. Um, sure, uh, but why? <laughs> okay. Why would the spork save time and effort? Remember what I said that uh, one of the places where you find the uh, spork often is uh, in um, in camping stores. Okay, so that's one of the locations. Okay, Dwee says to save plastic and materials. Yeah, so less materials, less waste, uh, and cheaper, right? So if you have a noodle restaurant, um, and you give somebody a spork and that's actually where you find them sometimes there are fast food noodle restaurants you have a spork uh, it's convenient you don't have to switch between a spoon and a fork um, and it's cheaper right you don't have to have two utensils okay so it's cheaper it's less waste um, it's functional for some kinds of foods like uh, hot noodle soup okay and uh, it takes less space too right Uh, for camping, if you're camping, if you're hiking and you're carrying your food, you're carrying um, all of your necessities on your camping trip, uh, you want to minimize uh, your weight, right? So how much you're carrying. So you often have these multi-tools uh, while you are camping. Now, there's another great idea for thinking of unusual objects, right? Or for camping, for example. Sports and camping have lots of unusual objects as well. So uh, for camping, um, it's lighter, right? It's uh, less, uh, less problematic. You don't have to carry both a spoon and a fork, okay? All right. Um, so what's my opinion? It's value. Um, good for camping. Okay. Uh, bad for everyday use. All right. Uh, so that would be my opinion. Obviously, if a spork were that great, we would not have uh, spoons and forks but we would just have sporks but it's neither the greatest spoon nor the greatest fork um, so therefore it's a spork um, it's good for camping but not that great for uh, eating every day okay all right um, so we have a lot of information now and uh, all of this information should come quite quickly when you're doing your one minute preparation time as long as you're confident as long as you come up with a good idea uh, you can uh, write down most of these notes quite quickly uh, or at least get the ideas and then you can even have 10 seconds for your last step um, step number five and what is that last step okay what's that last step what do I finally do uh, in that one minute preparation time before the examiner says your uh, one minute preparation time is up. Uh, please begin speaking. Uh, Amrit, this was um, uh, this was a question in a former exam. Yeah, a few years ago, this was an exam. This was an exam question. Okay. Uh, so Lamia says uh, first sentence. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so get your first sentence ready. Now the first sentence should use the topic and give a direct answer uh, to that topic. 
Okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, give uh, the first sentence here and then um, you can uh, do the same, we'll compare. Now for this exercise, let's all focus on writing sentences talking about the spork, okay? And then um, you can uh, come up with uh, different sentences when you get your chance to talk to me live, okay? Because that's what we're going to do next. Welcome Prabhasha to the class. Good to see you on board right as we start, okay? Uh, Tulsi, too general. So Tulsi says, some unusual things can make our lives easier and more comfortable. Um, too broad. Okay. Uh, now keep in mind, Tulsi, here's a very important point, point Tulsi. Keep this in mind. Okay. Uh, this question topic is in present perfect. Okay. Because we're emphasizing our experience of the unusual object. So another really important point, Tulsi, is reflect the grammar. So here it says, talk about an unusual object you have seen. Okay, so um, Rajveer says, an extremely unusual object that I have seen is a spork. Okay. Oh, no need to apologize, Toolsy. It's totally fine. Just letting you know. You want to be direct. So, uh, Rajveer has a good sentence. Rajveer says, an extremely unusual object that I have seen on several occasions is a spork. Okay. Baljeet says, an item that I use rarely is a spork. Yeah, very good, Baljeet. Um, I'm not sure when I've used a spork last. It might have been years ago, but I've definitely used it. Toolsy says, I have seen several unusual objects throughout my life. Toolsy, no. Don't talk about several unusual objects. Uh, this part two is asking you about one. Uh, talk about n unusual object n means one okay so this n means one so i don't need to know about several unusual objects that you've seen throughout your life i just need to know about one unusual object the more directly and accurately you answer the question the better all of those strategies that you've seen toolsy online that tell you to talk about a lot of different objects but the one and to thank the person um, that's too general. If you speak generally for cue card part two, uh, you get a lower mark. Okay. Uh, Zarina, um, but you did. So many of you did come up with unusual objects. Okay. All right. And Zarina, if, um, if an object, uh, for example, okay, so Zarina says, this is too hard for me. We cannot come up with it. Zarina, this was an IELTS question in the past, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, think about it this way, okay? Let me give you like a really simple um, kind of uh, concept here. Um, if you come from a country, so think about this, okay? Um, where else? Put it here. Okay, so if you come from a country that uses chopsticks, you could talk about uh, a fork or spoon or fork, probably better, um, because countries all kind of use um, spoons, but you could talk about a fork. Uh, if you come from a country that uses uh, forks, you could talk about chopsticks. Okay. Uh, by the way, even thinking about this right away, uh, one object that I thought of are the cooking chopsticks, those really long chopsticks that people use to cook food. Okay. So there are so many unusual objects um, that surround us, uh, Zarina. All right. 
And again, for the IELTS, it doesn't have to be amazing. So for example, if I live in Vietnam and I use chopsticks most of the time, then I could say an unusual object that I have seen is a fork. Uh, in Vietnam, most people eat with chopsticks and forks are not so common. Um, the other day I saw a very interesting dessert fork uh, used for eating cake. Okay. Uh, again, Zarina, um, this was a really important tip um, in uh, this part, okay? Because I've seen this happen, not just with this topic, but with even more common topics. You should never feel that you are stuck for ideas in part two. Keep an open mind and think of all the different situations in life, school, work, home, uh, tools, music, eating, visualize these. Okay, stay calm and visualize these. Okay, uh, Lamia, um, they usually don't repeat. They might ask similar questions, but part two usually does not repeat. Okay, so uh, let's get back to uh, what we're doing and you'll notice that it's really easy to continue uh, part two when you know the exact structure of what you're saying. So here we go, an extremely unusual object that I have seen on several occasions is a spork. Okay, let's describe the appearance before we talk about where it comes from, how much it costs. I already saw uh, somebody uh, say that it costs like $7, maybe that was Amra. Uh, before we do that, let's describe what it looks like. Um, this is an eating utensil, uh, which looks like um, a spoon and a fork uh, had a baby. Um, it has a long handle with a round head and uh, prongs uh, on the tip. Okay, so I'm teaching you some vocabulary here as well. All right. Um, so uh, it can be made of plastic, wood or metal and is anywhere from 10 to uh, 20 centimeters in length. Okay. All right. Um, so that's what it looks like, okay? An extremely unusual object that I have seen on several occasions is a spork. This is an eating utensil that looks like a spoon and a fork had a baby. Uh, it has a long handle with a round head and prongs on the tip. So those little points on the fork, those are the prongs of the fork, okay? Uh, it can be made of plastic, wood, or metal, and is anywhere from 10 to 20 centimeters in length. Uh, most commonly, a person can buy a spork uh, from a camping store online or uh, get one from a uh, fast food place uh, like a noodle house. Okay, good. Uh, Rajveer says it is a combination of both a spoon and a fork and serves the purpose of both of them. It costs around $3 and is available in different materials like metal, wood, and plastic and is usually about 20 centimeters. Good. Uh, Amrit says this is a very handy and comfortable for me. It costs around 300 rupees. It's made of wood and is 10 to 20 centimeters in length. Excellent. Okay, so you're describing the appearance. Um, I've described the appearance and the origin uh, so far and the way to use it. So um, this uh, eating utensil I'm repeating this so that you learn it, okay? So whatever we eat with, that tool is called a utensil, okay? Um, or another way that you say, you can say it is cutlery. Okay, so this cutlery, it's a synonym for eating utensil, okay? Just teaching you some words here. These are very useful 
you can definitely use these in your life with English. Uh, on an airplane, do you guys have a spork? Okay, so this cutlery, let me uh, steal a little bit from you here, Rajvir, serves uh, the purpose of both a spoon and a uh, fork. A person can uh, scoop liquids like soup uh, into their mouths um, or they can uh, jab a piece of meat or noodles um, and eat, eat it. Okay, all right, so there you go. Right, that's the, uh, that's the function, right? Okay, so um, now, uh, what's the logic of uh, the uh, spork? So uh, the spork uh, was likely created uh, to save uh, money, and effort. I mean, um, a fast food uh, noodle house does not need to give both utensils to the customer, therefore uh, saving money. Also, it is convenient especially for people who cannot use chopsticks. Okay. Um, and then uh, keep going with the camping, right? So often uh, campers take a spork uh, with them instead of a spoon and fork to uh, save space and uh, weight, uh, especially on long uh, hikes. The last time I saw a spork was when I went uh, hiking with my friend Mike and he had one uh, with him okay and then the value I think uh, that a spork is very useful in such circumstances but it is uh, neither the best as a spoon or a fork. Uh, so for everyday uh, eating, I prefer those instead. Okay, uh, now, if I have more time, I can look at the card, I can look at my notes and expand. Um, and uh, here I can always review my uh, cue card, make sure that I answered all the questions. So what the object is, yes, I answered that. Where did you see the object? Yes, I answered that. What is the use of this object? Yes, I answered that. And what do you think about this item? I answered that as well. So um, I've done a good job answering all those questions. Okay, uh, now let's review this. So um, speak with me, everyone. Here we go, okay. An extremely unusual object that I have seen on several occasions is a spork. This is an eating utensil that looks like a spoon and a fork had a baby. It has a long handle with a round head and prongs on the tip. It can be made of plastic, wood, or metal, and is anywhere from 10 to 20 centimeters in length. Most commonly, 
A person can buy a spork from a camping store online or get one from a fast food place like a noodle house. This cutlery serves the purpose of both a spoon and a fork. A person can scoop liquids like soup into their mouths or they can jab a piece of meat or noodles and eat it. The spork was likely created to save money and effort. I mean, a fast food noodle house does not need to give both utensils to the customer, therefore saving money. Also, it's convenient, especially for people who cannot use chopsticks. Often campers take a spork with them instead of a spoon and a fork to save space and weight, especially on long hikes. The last time I saw a spork was when I went hiking with my friend Mike and he had one with him. I think that uh, a spork is very useful in such circumstances, but it is neither the best as a spoon uh, nor a fork. So for everyday uh, eating, I prefer those instead. Baljeet says, the last time I saw a spork was when I went camping with my friend as he ate his noodles with it. Yeah, in fact, uh, some instant noodles, uh, you know how like sometimes instant noodles, they have uh, a fork inside? Uh, I've seen instant noodles that have a spork inside. <laughs> so now you won't be too surprised when you see that, okay? Um, Amra says, the one extraordinary item that I have ever seen in my life is a spork. It's a 15 centimeter long silver item made of metal, wood or plastic and is the combination of a spoon and fork. Very nice, Amra. I like the paraphrasing. I like the uh, one extraordinary item. Extraordinary here is a good way to paraphrase unusual. Okay, Amrit says, this is a very handy and comfortable item for me. It costs me around 300 rupees. It's made of wood and is 10 to 20 centimeters in length. I'm making a few corrections there in your speaking members, but you're doing good. Um, Zarina, don't give up. Toolsy, don't give up. I want to see uh, your, um, your responses here in your own words. Uh, students, let's let's practice talking about an unusual object. Um, let's do this together. So, I'm going to take some volunteers. Okay, uh, here we go. So let's uh, let's go to the websites to use the uh, speaking interface. And uh, this is members chat, so members get first priority. But if I see some other students and members are not volunteering, then we'll take somebody else. So let's hop to the website. Uh, let's go to aehelp.com everybody so this is uh, aehelp.com and um, create an account so www.aehelp.com okay um, click the uh, join now button uh, to join the premium outs package or for free click the try demo that's uh, you can 100% sign up for free as well and then uh, once you do that so click boom join now um, you join and then you go to your my student account uh, you end the tour don't take the tour right now um, and then uh, right above my head there yeah it's right there boom right above my head uh, you've got your uh, student partner speaking um, underneath that you can book a speaking interview practice with me and you can also download the mobile app with the uh, QR code that's right behind my head, right behind my back, actually. Um, okay, but right now, let's uh, click on that student partner uh, speaking. And there we go. Uh, except to start speaking, enable your microphone, enable your um, speakers, okay? And then you are in this uh, place here where you can uh, send me a message. So here is Amra, Omirjan, uh, Sarah, Mazad. Very nice to see you in here. Um, and then um, you can send me a message. And Omirjan has already done that. So 
uh, to volunteer for speaking. Now, um, Amra, if you would like to speak with me, send me a message again, um, members. Uh, you do have a, um, a little bit of an advantage here. Uh, so if I don't see you volunteering, then, uh, then I will uh, choose one of our other um, regular students like uh, Sarah and Omri Jean. And for this exercise, everyone, you can try the same. So if you, you know, you really want to practice the same, you can try uh, talking about the spork. Um, or if there is another unusual object that you would like to choose and you're confident in it, then you can do that as well. Okay. So Dwi, Baljeet, Amra, see that you're in here if you'd like to give it a go. Now, the way to do this, because everybody who's watching, uh, we will have an all chat class speaking part three after this one. And anybody will be able to volunteer there and you will do it the same way. Um, so you'll see uh, you'll see my handle, it's master. That's probably why some of you don't know what's going on here. So when you see master, click on the blue envelope beside my name, master. And then uh, write me a message, uh, say, I want to volunteer or uh, please let me try. And then I will let you try, okay? All right, um, so while I wait for Zarina or Dwi or Baljeet or Amra to figure it out, there's Zarina, okay, let's try Zarina then. Here, let's see, uh, brave Zarina, here we go. Practice makes perfect, so I'm volunteering. Right you are, Zarina. Okay, are you ready? Zarina. And you're absolutely right. Practice does make perfect. And practicing hard part twos are really, it's a really, really good idea, okay? Hi, Zarina. Hello, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm solid. <laughs> good. Right on. See, you're picking. You're picking up my lingo. Um, yes. Good. Good for you. You're solid. Um, so, Zarina, I uh, remember that um, in the chat you said, "Oh, this is a really difficult topic. Like, I'm stuck for ideas." Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a really good idea to practice challenging topics for yeah. part two in the IELTS because mm -hmm. sometimes part two cue card questions are unusual. Like they're a little bit weird. Um, so you don't want to be surprised if you get kind of an unusual part two. Mm. Um, I remember one of my students a little while ago was complaining because their part two topic was um, talk about a successful businessman that you know and they're like I don't know any businessmen so it was like really difficult and I got stuck so you have to kind of practice um, these kinds of topics so yes. um, Zarina um, let's do it so let's let's do this cue card now uh, again uh, up to you you can talk about the spork or <laughs> you can talk about a different item if you'd like the choice is yours okay I'd like to challenge myself Ooh, okay sounds good um, <laughs> all right so I will start you off I will keep the cue card on the screen so you can look at the questions um, as yes, you need sir. to okay um, yes, so let's do this. So, um, okay, um, talk about an unusual object you have seen. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay, sir. An unusual object that I have seen recently is a handheld rechargeable mini fan. It looks like a toy fan and it comes in different color. I knew because it's colorful, but um, uh, I saw this with one of the passenger in the bus when I was commuting going to work at first. I find it really funny, but I think it's a clever idea to have that kind of item because you can have it everywhere you go any time you need it to uh, freshen up yourself especially on hot summer days in, and 
it is definitely functional so next thing i did is i went to a local department store here in my area and i look for the same item and i bought my own and i found i got the color green which is my favorite color okay i will stop you there your two minutes is up and um uh, please uh, put the uh, note paper and the pencil to the side and now we will continue with part three for this part I will ask you more questions related to the topic of part two Serena that was really good um, That was really good. I knew exactly what you're talking about by the way I've seen them before those little rechargeable uh, Fans that people can hold there and they do look funny. They do look like a toy um, so um, Yeah, I'm always worried about hitting myself in the face uh, with those things when I'm using them um, so yeah, no, that was that was great. Or getting your hair caught in it is the other one, right? When the person gets it too close to their hair, um, that was really good. Let me give you some feedback, okay? So first of all, band band score wise, that part two would be an easy seven point five, probably as high as a band eight, okay? Oh. <laughs> you're answering the question clearly and directly. Um, I know what you're talking about. I can empathize with you and you're giving me good detail. So you told me what it is. It's a handheld rechargeable mini fan. Clear picture. You said it looks like a toy. I like that uh, simile. Um, and you told me where you saw it. You said that you saw it, um, one of the passengers using it on a bus. Uh, while you were commuting. Uh, nice mm -hmm. use of vocabulary, passengers, commuting. Um, and then you gave me your experience. So you said at first I thought it was really funny. Um, so you didn't follow the same structure that we talked about. Remember the structure, it's appearance, origin, um, then okay. it's usage, yeah. how you use it. And then mm -hmm. it's uh, the function and it's value, right? So you mix that up a little bit, which is not the end yes, of the world, sir. it's okay. But it's <laughs> easier if you keep the same. So a person can use yes, this sir. fan by making sure it has battery um, and yes, it's rechargeable. Um, how do you recharge it? So how do you recharge this, uh, this fan? Um, USB. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, there's some nice vocabulary that you can use there and you can talk a little bit more. So I can charge yeah. this fan by uh, using a USB cable. I can plug it into my computer at work mm -hmm. or I can uh, plug it into uh, my phone charger even. Right. So so yes. it, and then once it has full charge, there's a little switch. I can turn it on. Um, the blades mm -hmm. start spinning. They create a good air current and they help to cool yes. my face when my mm -hmm. face is sweating right so lots of sweating <laughs> it helps to cool my face um, and it keeps me cool and comfortable so you could have used a little bit more detail there yes, to get sir. that band nine but overall it was very good um, now one kind of mistake that you want to avoid and you want to practice avoiding this uh, Zarina is the yourself okay so don't switch to that second person the you yes, yourself yes. okay I so always... yeah everybody does <laughs> so you just have to avoid it so at first I thought it was really funny um, but then I realized it's very useful for a person to freshen up especially mm -hmm. on hot summer days it helps a person to stop sweating um, yes. and um, that's very useful especially uh, if I have makeup when I'm going to work <laughs> right yes okay try that sentence again so try to avoid yourself and try that sentence one more time so at first I thought it was really funny but then I realized it was very useful to freshen up especially on hot summer days um, and it stops a person from sweating which is very good when that person's wearing makeup like I do sometimes try that at first I thought it's really funny but I realized that it helps uh, me freshen up a person fre freshen up when a uh, person is feeling hot when on hot summer days and it can stop sweating yeah very good
Okay, excellent. So yeah, it takes practice to get that you and your out of your communication. <laughs> but once you get the you and the your out of your communication, then your communication starts to become much clearer and much more detailed. So keep practicing that. And then that band 758 will be 859. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Serena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said it's hard to think of an unusual object, but look at you go. Yes. That was a great unusual object, <laughs> the the little handheld yes. fan. That was really good. Yeah. Okay. My my mind uh, kind of playing around earlier. <laughs> yeah, there's that's you know, and as long as we stay confident and keep a clear mind, we can answer these questions. Like there are so many um, uh, electronic devices that are unusual as well. Like I even thought about that fidget. You know the fidget object that people yes. are spinning in their hands those are pretty weird too um okay serena thank you so much for being the first volunteer keep up the good work thank and, you sir. Uh, thank keep you. practicing bye serena bye sir all right what a what great work from serena give her a thumbs up that was really really good uh nipapoon welcome to our group of members uh, make sure to send me an email to get access to those exclusive uh, videos um, all right. Uh, okay. I think Baljeet was our second uh, member to uh, volunteer here. So, uh, Baljeet, let's give you a shot. Okay. We haven't heard your voice in a while. Um, are you ready? Uh, and again, you can just practice what we practiced in the class. So, you can talk about a spork um, if you haven't come up with an idea like uh, the, uh, <laughs> the rechargeable handheld fan. All right. Here we go. Hello, sir. Hi, Baljeet. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. What about you? I'm doing pretty good as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm enjoying today's uh, lesson topic with the spork and now the handheld fan. Um, all right, uh, Baljeet, have you ever seen a spork? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Really? But You've never seen a spork? I have created the picture, but now I can see. <laughs> Maybe they're not so common in India, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe one day. Maybe one day, Baljeet. Um, all right. Yes, uh, or or if you don't want to wait, Baljeet, I'm sure you can go on Amazon because I checked and they have sporks. So. <laughs> yes, um, sir. I would definitely check. <laughs> all right. If you like camping, it's a useful, <laughs> useful little item. Okay, Baljeet. Yes. So are you ready to do this part too? I will start you off. And then uh, like uh, same with Zarina, you can uh, go with something new. Or if you want, just go with a spork. It's uh, not a big deal. Whatever you do side okay i will go for a spoke sir all right go for the spark so uh here we go um talk about an unusual object you have seen your one minute preparation time is up uh please begin speaking mm, an item that i use rarely is a spoke it is a basically a utensil uh, uh, which is uh, made up of metal, wood, plastic, or uh, maybe a combination of uh, different kinds of alloys. So <clears throat> this is basically uh, a combination of spork, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a fork and a spoon. And uh, it is about uh, 20 to 10 centimeters of uh, length it can be available in uh, online stores uh, as well as uh, some camping camping stores also the uses usages of uh, this item is pretty good because people can not only eat uh, noodles with the uh, this item but also the pudding so uh, I remember uh, I first time I saw this object when I went uh, on a camping with my friend uh, near about uh, 20 kilometer from our town and he had this uh, spork in his bag and he used to eat uh, his uh, uh, breakfast with this so <clears throat> I think uh, it is good for uh, uh, camping and not for all everyday usages so I think it is a uh, value for money and people uh, can use uh, 
this for when they are going for camping because it is uh, a good alternative for both spoon and fork okay i will stop you there now we will continue with part three um okay that was really good um so uh, your band score would be about a seven for that okay um for sure so it's 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 considered good uh english um because you're making sense uh you've got good structure you're answering the questions on the cue card you're staying specific you're giving me an original answer now um one part of your speech that was a bit awkward was your fluency it's felt like you were just getting stuck a little bit uh for uh coming up with uh good sentences and connecting your sentences so you had some repetition of words like usage uh usage usage um yes. was repeated a few times um, also, when you're talking about the appearance of an object or a person, Baljeet, don't go into too much detail. Like you said, it's basically a utensil that is made up of wood, metal, and plastic. If you say made up of wood, metal, and plastic, it sounds like it's all of those at the same time. Okay, um, So made from, not made up of. So you had a few kind of slight oddities in your word choice that made the ideas a bit confusing so don't say made up of it's made from either wood metal or plastic and then you know you throw in the combination of alloys but i was kind of like really like do you want me to let's not go into like this is titanium a combination of steel and tin right so um it's it's a bit much right we're talking about a spork not a space rocket right so um so it's a yeah. bit much and actually this came from my electrical engineering studies <laughs> i felt that i felt that you were just trying to throw some extra pieces of information in english in there uh, and while yeah. I appreciate that, right, uh, you know, as your friend, as an examiner, it's kind of like, meh, are we talking about a spork right now or are we talking about electrical engineering, right? Um, so so just, just careful with that, Baljeet, okay? Stick to the topic. Really keep in mind the strategy of appearance, origin, yeah. how to use it, right? Um, it was kind of interesting for me that that's the one that a lot of students forget is the way to use it so think about the audience the examiner as kind of like an alien they've never seen a spork before how do i how do i use a spork what do i do with it right so you scoop liquids you stir liquids yeah. or you can poke you can jab with it like a fork you can poke a steak you can jab a steak with it okay or meat with it yeah. so um how do you use it right like uh, with zarina it's the same you've got this little fan but how do you use it okay like for example with the little fan that zarina was talking about you know we want to charge it make sure it has lots of batteries because i know that with those little fans one problem is they don't last too long they only have about like 10 minutes of functioning time so you always yeah. want to have a full battery a full charge then you turn it on and make sure to keep it about 30 to 40 centimeters from your face so you don't hit your face or you don't get your hair tangled in it right so usage how do you use that object safely in a good way all right that's a it's important can you tell me just one sentence about the spork how do you use it i can use the spork for stirring my coffee as well as uh, for eating of uh, as i mentioned pudding or noodles okay by either scooping or jabbing it okay yes I remembered that when I completed the sentence. <laughs> yeah, so think about the movement that's required for that object, okay? All yes. right, so the examiner is an alien. They do not know what you know. All right, Baljeet, thank you so much for volunteering. It was really great to hear your voice. Keep up the uh, good work, and uh, hopefully you have the uh, magical uh, opportunity of interacting with a spork one of these days. <laughs> yeah, sure, sir. I will definitely look... <laughs> All right. After the class. <laughs> Bye, Baljeet. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. All right. That was Baljeet uh, talking about an item he's never actually seen before, which was quite impressive. Give Baljeet a thumbs up. That was really good. 
Okay, um, so uh, Amra, I think Amra really wanted to test her microphone and I know she's been having troubles with it. So let me give Amra a chance to test the microphone. I, I did see that message, Amra, in the chat. So uh, let me just send you a quick message here. Are you uh, ready to test your system? If it works, then um, you can give this a go, okay? Oh, I just see you in the chat. You just said, sir, it is not working. What's going on with that microphone, Amra? You got to throw it out and get yourself a new one. Okay. All right. Then we'll forego Amra for now. Uh, Dwi, if you're still here, um, you definitely can. Dwi is another one of our uh, somewhat newer members. She's been with us for a little bit now. So are you ready? Okay. If you're a member, let me know. Like, I can't remember, Sarah, are you a member or not? Or Mohammed? Um, if you're a member, let me know. Okay. Uh, Dwi says yes. Hello, sir. Good morning. Hi, Dwi. How are you doing? I'm um, good. Yeah. How about you? I'm doing quite well also. Thank you for asking. Um, any big plans for the weekend? Um, yeah, it's definitely so big because in two days I will face my IELTS test. Ooh. In, in yeah. There you go. All right. So lots of learning, lots of practice this weekend. Good news, Dwi. We've got uh, more speaking today. So we've got part three after this class. And then I've got two more speaking classes tomorrow on uh, Light Hall and... Uh, discord as well yeah so join those I have for that. <laughs> awesome great i will be looking for you keeping in mind that you've got an upcoming exam okay uh dwi um let's do this are you ready to practice this uh, part two cue card yes definitely all right here we go so i'll start you off um and again, Dwee, same thing uh, as with uh, the last two volunteers with Baljeet and Zarina. You can uh, choose a different item if you'd like or stay with the spork. Completely up to you, okay? Yes, okay. All right. Uh, so uh, talk about an unusual object you have seen. Uh, your one minute preparation time is up. Uh, please begin speaking. An object that is really unfamiliar for me is none other than transparent face mask. The first time I saw it is in the television on the talk show event where the both uh, presenter and speaker using that. It's actually a protection medical mask made of the fabric, but it has transparent plastic shape in rectangle at the front of it at the mouth. And it also has a pair of string to connect it to human ears. So to wear it, actually, people just need to attach the string to the ears and adjust the mask on the face to make it comfortable for them to speak and breathe. Um, I have searched for that mask, actually, and it can be bought at the local drugstore or even the e-commerce with the price $5 for each. Um, why it has a transparent plastic shape in front of it, it's, it's kind of... Uh, help people to show the mouth, the mouth of the speaker, even though they use masker. So uh, the articulation of the people is easily to understood. And in the lately, not only the television uh, employees that use that mask, but also the deaf people at the meeting, especially when this pandemic situation. This is kind of hard for the the deaf people to talk and have communication because the mask is covered the mouth. So uh, this actually b bring the ants at their wits. And uh, at the three months ago, if I'm not mistaken, I have a meeting with Kayan and they provided this mask, the transparent wand, uh, that actually because the client is um, having wand personnel that is deaf. So in, the, in this time, I really think that this is convenience pr uh, for solving the problems because people hard to communicate uh, 
when the mouth is missing. Okay, your and time is really up. Open. I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. So <laughs> good, Dwee. Okay, eventually mm -hmm. the uh, the examiner will stop you, and that was about two minutes. So that was really good. Um, all right, first of all, Dwee, huge thumbs up. That was great. That was really fantastic. Uh, suddenly, I think uh, all of our members who are in the class from the beginning, and I'm sure a lot of people thought, oh, talking about an unusual object is so challenging. But now, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, there's so many unusual objects around us, right? Um, so, uh, and definitely uh, the transparent face mask is an unusual object that has become somewhat popular over the last few years with... Um, with uh, COVID, yeah, we see people walking around with all kinds. Um, I, you probably also saw that other face mask um, with the LED lights that show LED emojis. Lights? Yeah, so like oh, uh, glowing God. lights on the mask, and if you're smiling, the mask is smiling. Have you seen that one? Oh my God, that's just sick. No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can actually, uh, the mask can sense whether you're smiling or laughing, and then the outside of the mask has lights on it, and it will actually copy like an emoji the um, emotion that you're that you're, <laughs> that you're so yeah people come up with all kinds of crazy things but the the transparent mask was was really good right um, and you had some really good ideas and I felt that you know you were working really hard to stay away from that you and yours you were original that was easily a seven five to an eight um, there were just a couple of sentences we where I felt like it was a little bit hard to figure out exactly what you're saying like when you're talking about the deaf clients I think you were rushing a little bit and I get the idea okay so for a person who is deaf they need to see the articulation of the mouth and you did explain that but some of it was a little bit tricky to understand. So um, I think you can improve by half a band just by slowing down a bit. So um, you're giving me lots of information. You can slow down a bit, give me a little bit less information, but a little bit clearer and you'll get an even better score. Okay. Like you'll get like an eight, eight, five, because I think you have very good English and you had a very good idea here. Um, and also when you're... Um, moving a bit slower you can uh, think about some good ideas that might escape you otherwise so here you talked about the articulation of the mouth and the transparent face mask being important for that um, one thought I had while you were talking about this and this is the how the examiners thinking as well as what about the emotions right like I thought one of the best um, uses of the transparent face mask is so that our listeners can see our emotions not just our articulation so there's more communication happening right um, yeah. also the transparent face mask maybe lets the person breathe a little bit easier because it's not right on the mouth but there's space between the mask and the mouth yeah. so a little bit easier for breathing as well so um, it's good for presentations it's good for um, personal communication with friends it's good for video chatting online so that we can see the whole face so you know a little bit slower and then maybe a little bit clearer okay um, okay otherwise a yep. fantastic a fantastic idea um, and I liked how you use some of those correlative conjunctions as well, like not only, but also your fluency was fantastic. I couldn't keep up with my typing, so that was really good. Um, any questions about part two, Dwee? Um, yes, uh, I, I was thinking that, uh, is it okay to make it general or it's more like personal? Because uh, I see, I, I, I say it a lot of time that people could use this or uh, it's convenient for people or or it's better for me to I could use it by putting on my ears yeah um, it's, it's a it's a very good question um, so okay so just for everybody what Dwee is asking me is um, should she be using the first person voice of the speaker first person voice of speaker or author it means like saying I me my that's your subjective personal view and personal experience that's your subjective first person voice okay second person voice is from the listener that's the you and the yours that's what we stay away from the only time you use that is in the general IELTS in task one 
Um, and the third person voice is the objective voice. That's where people, individuals, clients, customers, that's the third person voice, okay, where we don't use the I or the you. And it's very important for Band 8, Band 9 to control those voices. Um, in the cue card, Dwee, uh, you really have to pay attention to the cue card. Some cue cards are very personal. So this is a good example because notice how it says, talk about an object, and I'm highlighting this for you, uh, that you have seen, okay? Where did you see this object? Uh, what is the use of this object? What do you think about this object? So in three of the parts, you have this you, and that's telling you that you need to use the I, me, my, okay? Yes. However, this first uh, question here, the what the object is and what is the use of the object, that's third person, okay? It's not saying what do you use it for or uh, what is your object so it's more third person so here you can kind of use a combination and that's usually typical for uh, part two speaking is you can use a combination of the first person and third person just stay away from the second person voice okay all right that is so clear thank you so much yeah when uh, when i did my exam i did the i sometimes do the official ielts exam incognito like i go in and i sit the exam as a student um, at an exam center where people don't know that i'm a um, and hopefully they don't <laughs> recognize me when i did it last time um the question that i got for part two cue card was talk about a place that you often go to in your city and i talked about this um, island that has a lot of um, recreational facilities where i go for jogging and for swimming and uh, i got a band nine in my speaking and part two was mostly in first person where i was talking about i me my myself i do this i go there mm -hmm. so um so really pay attention to the card okay okay all right. Yeah. Okay, Dwee, good question. And then I look forward to seeing you in our upcoming classes so that you can really get that best score on your test, okay? Keep it up. Yes, yeah, sir. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Bye, Dwee. Bye. All right, that was Dwee. Give her a thumbs up. She's doing a great job. And I think that was a question that probably many of you have as well. Um, I'm going to stop there, everyone, for now. If you didn't get, have a chance to volunteer in this class, don't worry. We have a speaking part three class coming up. So, Sarah, I will definitely be looking for you because... Uh, and Omir Jean as well because I know you're very studious and you really want to speak as well so uh, come back for speaking part three that will focus on related topics uh, to part two everybody we're using our websites all the time in these live classes so uh, make sure to uh, register uh, on our website uh, for either the premium course or at least the free version uh, so that you can use um, all of these uh, tools that we use in the live teaching. Uh, click that red button to join our premium package uh, there, okay? Um, all right, everyone. So, again, um, stick around. Come back in 30 minutes. I will host uh, Speaking Part 3. And uh, in that 30 minutes, check out aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Thank you, members. Lots of great uh, participation today. Baljeet, uh, Zarina, uh, Dwi, uh, thank you for volunteering. Amra, figure out that microphone. Baljeet, um, great job. Amrit, uh, Prabhasha, everybody, fantastic. We'll see you soon, okay? Uh, I'm Adrian, I'm signing out for now, but I'll be back shortly.